at Squamish, even if it's blowing, you know, 25 knots, won't be strong enough to, to blow through that rock of Bowen Island. So we won't really know that it's there, and it might be deceiving as well as it's, as it's coming out of Howe Sound, it might be bending down towards us, which might seem like an easterly or a southeasterly. But then as we get further up Bowen Island, beyond that halfway point, and Bowen Island starts tapering into Howe Sound, at that point, if we start feeling that we're starting to get headed into Bowen Island, and uh, then we tack and we get lifted up a little bit on port tack, that could be the beginning of the Squamish. And uh, now all logic changes. And, and the reason why logic changes is, is what happens with Squamish, anyone that's raised here, and I know most of you have, is the Squamish only you know, has a tongue that goes so far out into the strait. So if you're not in that, actively part of that breeze, you're just wallowing at the edge of the tongue. And there's either a very, very light southeasterly on the other side of it, or nothing at all. And uh, so it's, it, this is a very common early morning phenomenon. And uh, so you have to actually buy into that Squamish a bit. So, so again, coming from Cowan Point over to Point Atkinson, you want to make sure that you're, if you're in the Squamish, you're actually not sailing directly to the finish line, but you're actually sailing sort of a, an indented line almost towards Passage Island here, but not inside of Passage Island, but very, very close to it. And that way you know that uh, you've bought into it. There's a little chance of you going out to where the transition is between it and the calm, or it and the southeasterly. And then as we get from Passage Island over to the finish here, we have to know that in the last 200, 400, 500 yards to the finish line, we're going to have to suck it up and get back out there and, and fight it in the old breeze or, or what, whatever else is, remains. But it's not going to be the Squamish. So we just have to get around that point and whatever's there. So, um, so here, here's what, how I would suggest you look at that. The one thing you can see with the Squamish, if, if it's clear enough, is that very, very little reflection on the water. So if we're looking up either Collingwood Channel or how sound here, and we look up there, and it's black from one side to the other, well, it's a pretty good chance that there's breeze from one side to the other. And uh, especially if you're related to anywhere else where you can see some lights from the shore. Um, so that would be my first clue. And, um, and then I think, wow, got any other? Tips on that, Doug? Yeah, don't get too close to that point itself uh, on Atkinson at the, the, the finish if the uh, Squamish is starting to peter down. Because the current was right, right, right on the right point. On the rock. Right. Yeah. Just, yeah. And, uh, so Doug was just saying there's heaps of current near the rock. So uh, as you get near the finish, make sure you don't get becalmed in that spot that you're right next to any of those hard spots. Um, and I think the other thing about the Squamish that, that I would look at is, you know, is as you go along, you're going to feel strong puffs and light puffs, but, you know, just keep an eye open or, or have someone on your boat just looking offshore to see if they see any lights. And, you know, this is where a hand-bearing compass really comes in handy because, uh, if you're watching a boat to lure it of you and the bearing starts to change quickly, you know, that means they've either gotten a giant wind shift, and if we were in a Squamish and we were on port tack, that means they've probably gotten a giant header, and uh, maybe they still have breeze and they're going to tack, and then if they tacked in their, their breeze as opposed to our breeze, they'd probably be able to hold their bearing again. But if they're losing their bearing, they're, they're falling backwards, there's a good chance that Either that scenario has happened, or they've fallen out of the wind altogether. And um, so then you have to decide, okay, well, we don't want to be that far offshore and into that. So, uh, you know, keeping an eye on that is a really, really good thing. Um, and as we get closer to Vancouver, you know, again, I'd be looking, maybe even standing up near the gooseneck and just having a look in the bay, because the bay is all lit up with all these freighters and lights and skyscrapers, and just seeing what we 
think the wind is doing. And it's, if it's nighttime, it's just having a rough guess on how much reflection there is on the water. And, uh, and that's going to give us a pretty good idea of what's going on. And also, if you look at the direction that the freighters are, if it was windy, the, uh, the freighters generally line up with the wind, assuming the current is more or less not so much of a factor. And uh, so just looking at all those clues, because again, you know, it's really just about that last little play into the finish there. Yeah. Um, so that's it in a southeasterly and a Squamish. Um, I think in a westerly, just quickly, there's a few things that we need to know. If it's a westerly start, obviously an upwind start, we're getting up to Point Atkinson fairly straightforward. Just stay in the river current, play of the wind shifts. Um, what we, we know will happen as we continue out on starboard, out into the strait, we're going to get lifted. So as we go past Bowen Island here, and as we head over towards the Nanaimo, we're going to get a lift somewhere in the range of maybe even 15, 20 degrees. So, uh, so whatever course you have as you leave the bay here, you, you can be pretty much guaranteed everything being equal if the forecast looks strong that, you know, you're generally going to get lifted up. And then the common consensus is, you know, depending on the current, you know, it most likely would switch to a flood, so that's a good thing, is we just continue that way all the way over to the Vancouver Island side. And then once we got there, there's going to be chances to find some flatter water uh, or maybe some wind shifts. And, uh, and then as it gets later, there may be that phenomenon where the qualicum comes in, which in this case would be a port tack lift, and which get us up there. So, uh, so that's about really all you need to know there. Um, getting back as far as running goes, I don't think there's too much to be thinking about and then what we just talked about which is just stay a little bit make sure you don't get too far inshore if you're running downwind in a westerly and uh, stay where the best pressure is and that's usually what, sort of an imaginary line between entrance and Bolinas and, and maybe a little bit to leeward in a westerly of Sisters Island. Question?